sign and form so you can sign up. Yeah, so um, how's it going, everybody? First off, uh, real quick, the sign in form is in the chat. Amanda included a link in there. So if y'all would go to that link, sign in and fill out the two, three questions that we have there, that'd be lovely. Um, give it a couple more minutes before we start. Let some people. What about uh, like starting 705? Is that? Yeah, fine? yeah, that's what I was going to do. Um, mm -hmm you know, give time uh, for people getting out of class and whatnot. Right. It's been a long day, everyone. <laughs> so Except thank for you me. for coming in after a long day. <laughs> mm -mm. I am what? glad you have the last question on the survey, just so you know. <laughs> Why is that? Because we don't get paid for volunteer research. We might as well get some credit for it if we complete something successfully. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think that's the idea because most undergrads do spend like 10 to 12 hours a week and that's... I'm usually in there personally six, if that, three to six. But still, that's like a pretty significant amount of time, right? So... Yeah, and I have a job on top of that and I need to be able to continue working at that job because I get paid for that and I don't get paid for the research. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a little just bit... for the resume. Eh. <laughs> Somebody would have to help me write my resume. I'm one that's personally tries to stay humble about myself, and it's like it makes it very difficult updating a resume. You're in Ninja's lab, right, uh, Jacob? Yep. You're you still go there, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, lovely, <laughs> Matt. Yeah, lab. I still go there. I'm there on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So. Oh. Hey, just a There's general a announcement. Um, for the meeting, we're going to go ahead and have people put in their questions in the chat. So if you have any questions while we're going along with the slides or at any point, um, just throw them right in the chat. And towards the end, when we go to questions and answers, we'll go ahead and visit them. So just letting you all know ahead of time. Thank you, Martin. Okay, we still have three minutes. Where, where, where do we leave off with that? <laughs> um, you're in lab. Tuesdays and Thursdays. Yeah, yeah but my life keeps on going. <laughs> a couple projects needed to get done, and now it's just capstone stuff for the time being. Oh. Capstone is fun. Capstone is the funnest. I swear, man. I, I can't tell you how much fun I had with my it's group. Time with Dr. Schultz, yeah. <laughs> It's time because Dr. Schultz has been pretty good about it this semester. He's having us do journal entries every week and he's reading them before we yeah. meet with him. So yeah. he's doing pretty good for being yeah, 86 or 87 is. years old. He's doing great. <laughs> he's 86 or 87. I counted his, I counted the years, by the way, from what is on the CD. Oh my. You did? Oh he's 86 my. or 87, has to be. Well, thank you for letting me know because I was curious, to be honest. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's doing pretty good, I have to say. Yeah, he's rocking and rolling and making uh, pretty good money, too, at that. Not gonna oh, lie. yeah. I'm shocked the university hired him at his advanced age. <laughs> oh, age doesn't matter. It's the amount of publications and citations he has. Well, also, that's mm -hmm. illegal. You, like, yeah. that's yeah. discrimination. <laughs> yeah. You can't do that. I'm not, I wasn't trying to touch on that one, but <laughs> I okay. was shocked in the Like, end. if there's other reasons, like, if he's, like, showing signs of, like, uh, like, um, like, I don't know how to say this. If he's, like, senile. <laughs> like if he's, oh, my. Okay. Uh, on that note, uh, it's now uh, 7.05, so we'll go ahead and get this started. Um, First off, thank you all for coming out. Uh, we really appreciate it. Um, second, the sign-in form is in the chat. Uh, Amanda linked it. Uh, if you could send it again for anybody that might have joined afterwards, uh, that'd be great. Just go to the link, fill out. There's like two or three questions on there, or three or four, excuse me. Uh, and to get points. Go... Yes. Yeah. Somebody yes. has now sent it three times in the chat. <laughs> no? Well, because you can't Better like... safe than sorry. Yeah, whenever you join, you can't see previous chats. So yeah, didn't yeah. realize that. Good yeah. to know. So, um, if you could go ahead and sign in, you'll get your points first off. And second off, one of the questions will help us decide um, on what direction we want to take with something in the future. So 
y'all's input is very, very valuable to us. Um, again, uh, Martin mentioned it earlier, but I'll go ahead and reiterate it. Uh, as we're going through this, if you have any questions on anything, put the question in the chat. And at the end, whenever we get to the questions and answers part, we'll address each question in the order that they were in the chat. Um, so just as you're going, as we're going through, you have a question, throw it in there. And at the end, we'll go ahead and address it. Amanda, uh, that yeah. might be something to type up in about 10 minutes or so. <laughs> okay. Because there may still be some stragglers that straggle in as the beginning of this. Just my personal thought on that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, what we have here tonight for y'all is a workshop on how to get involved with research uh, on and off campus and uh, REUs, which we'll go ahead and explain. Um, Amanda, if we could go ahead and get you to talk about REUs, let us know what they are, that'd be great. Okay, so an REU stands for Research Experience for Undergraduates. Most of them happen during the summer. Um, there's opportunities in any field, um, even if you're not interested in, you know, something specifically biomedical engineering, there's like, everything's happening everywhere. Most universities have REUs. Um, so yeah, that's just like the kind of general acronym you'll probably see thrown around when it comes to undergraduate research. So why, why should someone like an undergraduate participate in research? So I'll tell you why. Y'all as undergraduate biomedical engineers, um, you know as now that the market for the market or in, in the industry for BMEs is not that competitive compared to many other engineering disciplines. So as a result, engaging in research during your under, undergraduate years would be as of a great uh, of a great value because you get to apply what you learned in class. So once you go ahead and get out of biochemistry, biomedical processes and so on and so forth, and you get into the lab, you can relate what you have learned in, in class and what you're applying into the lab. And also that's a, a very important aspect in, in that you, during your undergraduate years, you really, you don't know what, what, what do you like or you dislike. So when you get into research, you're gonna disco discover that part uh, for yourself. So you're gonna be able to discover your passion. What, what do you like uh, about biomedical engineering? Because biomedical engineering is so broad, it, it's interrelated and interdisciplinary. And there are, uh, and it has a lot of different aspects integrated in it and you get to choose a few of those. And also long-term lab experience looks good on your resume. So after you graduate as a BME and you have that uh, your, in your resume, it says that you're a research assistant, that's gonna look so attractive because you have done something ex extracurricular, something that is related to your major and some of the undergraduates actually graduate and they have a publication under their name. So that is something so great when they wanna go for graduate school or they wanna join the industry. So that is helpful. Last but certainly not least, you, and that's a long-term uh, long effect, you do contribute to the world of science. Every single day we have so many different researchers all around the world publish and give us information. And one day you can be one of those people and that's gonna be of great value to yourself. So that's why you should participate in research in a nutshell. Next slide. Okay, so um, hopefully Omar convinced you to do research. So where are you gonna start? Um, you need to find a lab to work with. There are lots of labs to work with at U of H. Um, I'll, later on I'll show you a website to go that shows specifically the labs that are looking for volunteer undergraduate assistants at, in the BME department. Um, so then, and Devin will elaborate about how to contact a professor um, later on. Uh, on the website, it'll also give you their contact information and like a little summary of what they do, like what they're investigating. 
so that's super helpful because sometimes like it'll be a vague title for the lab but then when you read more like oh this has to do with the heart or oh this has to do with um neuroscience so once you get into a lab it's a good idea to start looking at SURF or PERS these are scholarships that are given to us by the office of undergraduate research um there's some SURF is for the summer and then PERS is for like the normal spring or fall semester these are really good because they teach you like mostly everything about the research field um, they have lectures, and then also you have your very own project that you get to do. Um, okay, yeah, no, no, okay. Sorry. Um, uh, yeah, and then you get to present it at um, undergraduate research day. So that's, and there I put the, uh, the application opens January coming up. So I think it's a good time to start looking for a lab soon so that by the time January comes, you'll have like someone you're working with, that's easier to apply. And they help you come up with the project too. Um, so outside of SURF and PERS, that's here at U of H, you can also look at other places because there are also like Baylor's around here, um, UT's kind of close by. So for RAUs outside of U of H, I am gonna show you, um, let me share my screen. There's also where, some summer programs you can apply for at other universities. That's another Right, and you, there. For doing that, you just search like such and such school REU. For this example, I'm trying to here. Okay, um, we searched up NSF REUs, right? And then here it takes you to like a bunch of programs, and it's sorted. The way I look for like Texas, right? I want to find some in Houston. Just click site location to where, hold on, um, Wisconsin. So it's like basically descending order for the alphabet. And then come down here and you see Texas already. And where's some Houston ones? I know I saw, there we go, Rice. So here's whatever you click here and it'll take you to the website and how to apply and all that. And Amanda will tell you more about that because I don't really know. Also wanted to show you that the NSF has already used for like uh, every field, which Amanda already said. Yeah, it's gonna take too long. Never mind. Okay, and here's the SURF website. Um, this is what I did. I'll talk to you more about it later. And the application will show up here. And you could read more about if you're eligible and like how to apply, all that stuff on this website, which is here. See, Office of Undergraduate Research. Um, Here's the purse. I think for this semester is probably too late for you to apply if you're not in a lab already. Um, but definitely when it comes to fall, look into the purse again. And um, here's the website I told you about with all the research labs, see, BME, College of Engineering, and then click each lab. And additional to this, if the maybe your professor that you're with, with, with right now doesn't have a lab on here, you can also look here for their contact information. And that's all I have to show you. Uh, how do I stop share? So I just want to add that the deadline for Paris, as Lily mentioned, is really coming up. It's the 2nd of November, November but that's okay. If you're a, if you're a junior or beyond, the you're you're still you still have a chance to apply for Paris, which which will be the for the next fall, and you still have SURF, which which takes place over the summer. SURF gives really great scholarship money if you're interested in that, and I think Devin will go into that in depth. Yeah. Yeah. So um, a couple things real quick about the previous slide. Um, one, if y'all need any help. Uh, kind of navigating those REU websites or navigating the application, um, please reach out to one of us and we'll be glad to help y'all. I know it can be a little bit um, confusing at times, but it's, we're here to help, you know, with those hiccups and problems. Um, additionally, uh, for the professors doing research here, I'm pretty sure all of them have like a brief description on the faculty page of the research um, or of what they're doing. But as Sit Lolly mentioned, if they have it vague or they don't have a long description, reach out to them. 
So whenever we're on the, while we're on the topic of reaching out to professors, um, I might as well go ahead and address the next point. Uh, Martin, if you could go ahead and hit next slide. This is probably one of the most, from what I've noticed over my time here, this is probably one of the biggest hurdles that is separating students from participating in research is the hesitance to reach out to professors. So here, I, I've said, I don't know if y'all saw it in the uh, group me, I sent it a couple weeks ago, kind of a general guideline of how to reach out to them, but I'll go ahead and reiterate it here. So what you wanna do whenever you're reaching out to a professor, first off, find one that you know, okay, what they're doing I'm interested in or what they're doing I like, what they're doing I don't like, I'm gonna pick this lab. Before you email that professor, what I would suggest to do is go through their recent publications. And by recent, I mean within the last five years. So go through their publications in the last five years, find an article of theirs that you think is interesting and go through it, read through it, find some interesting points or you know some questions that you might have about it. And once you've gone through it, again, this is all a suggestion, not a requirement. Um, but this is like a way I've noticed works best. As you, after you've gone through one of the professor's articles and you're familiar with it, then reach out to them and say, hello, Dr. So-and-so, I'm blah, blah, blah. From, I'm an undergraduate in the Department of Biomedical Engineering. And I read your paper on X, Y, and Z. I found, you know, these three things interesting, da, da, da can we meet to discuss about it or talk about it? Um, and from there, you kind of just, after you meet with him or talk to him about it uh, more, then you can slip in like, hey, is there an opening or a possibility that I can, you know, get involved with working in your lab or can I participate or volunteer? So the reason I'm suggesting reading a paper of theirs and then reaching out to them is because it shows one, that you have initiative, which professors love seeing. Two, it shows that you have passion. You're passionate enough about what they're doing that you took the time to go out of your way and go through their publications. That, that means a lot to professors. I mean, even if they don't have spots available, still it's just the fact that you showed interest in their work. They'll really appreciate that. Um, and last is because you don't wanna go in there blind. You don't wanna go into an interview not really knowing what's going on. I mean, I'll tell y'all right now, from personal experience, the first interview I ever had, I went in there not knowing anything about what the professor did and it was terrible. I left there with my face about as red and embarrassed as possible. So I'm gonna tell y'all from firsthand experience, go in there knowing what they're doing and knowing what they're talking about. Um, really, I would suggest um, sophomores, sophomore and up is when I would start suggesting reaching out to them. Because that freshman year, you have the intro to computing and you have all your other freshman classes which can be a little bit difficult uh, to handle on top of just getting accustomed to you know, college in general. So I would suggest sophomores and uh, like start you know, reaching out to professors. Um, that way you have like a baseline knowledge of you know, basic biology, biomedical engineering stuff, um, and you've kind of gotten accustomed to uh, you know, how college works and everything. But the last thing I wanna say is whenever you go and speak to a professor, don't feel intimidated. Don't feel like, okay, this guy's got three degrees. He has 40 years experience in the field. And here I am just an undergraduate. I don't know anything. Don't go in there with that you know, mentality or attitude. Be as confident and you know, be as confident in yourself as you possibly can be and be enthusiastic, be passionate about 
what you want to do and what they're doing. I mean, if you show enthusiasm on top of your confidence, they'll think, you know, this guy's a star. He, he's amazing. Of course, let's take him on. Um, but that that's the main thing is professors at the end of the day, they're just people too. They're regular people just like any of us. So there's no reason anybody should, you know, be nervous or intimidated when speaking to a professor. Maintain confidence and enthusiasm. Um, but that's kind of the basics of, you know, like getting involved in research and REUs. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna briefly go through um, our mine, Amanda's, Omar's, and Sit Lolly's experience in research and um, the research fellowship and opportunities. So I'll start out. Uh, I was a SURF fellow in 2019. So SURF is Summer Undergraduate Research Fellowship, and it, it's a great program. Like uh, Omar had said earlier, they give you, I believe, a $4,000 scholarship, which, what? $4,000 for doing research? Okay, sure, I'll take it. It's a lot um, of money. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So it is definitely, I mean, something I would suggest everybody looks out or look, you know, into. If you, the majority of people at the university don't apply to it. So if you, they'll pretty much almost take anybody who applies to it. So I'm suggesting, you know, don't hesitate or don't say, oh, well, it's not worth it when applying to one of those. So a little bit about my experiment, uh, experience is I joined the Dr. Nash, Dr. Alibadi lab in January of last year. And then through that, I got my SURF fellowship with them that following summer. Uh, kind of a little bit about the research I did for any of y'all that are interested, feel free to reach out to me. I'm, I love talking about the stuff. So, you know, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Uh, my research consisted of looking at inherited retinal diseases, and I don't know if you've heard of it yet, but we wanted to use uh, DNA-packed nanoparticles uh, to cure or try to correct these uh, mutated genes. So that that the whole concept of working with something at like a nano scale and trying to you know edit single nucleotides or base pairs, I just found fascinating. I loved it. Um, what I got through the whole, my research that I've done with them so far and the SURF fellowship, one, it gave me just basic like, okay, this might sound very common sense almost, but it gave me basic lab skills such as how to work a pipette. I mean, you'd be surprised how many people go in there and they're doing it the wrong way, such as myself to begin with. So you gain a lot of, you know, basic lab skills, which is very great on resumes. I mean, amazing on resumes. Um, also, just depending on how in depth you get in it, you can learn some further, you know, advanced stuff, or you can start getting more involved with the professor and start doing more. It just depends on, you know, what you do. Um, another thing is, I've been working on a particular project with two people for almost two, like going over two years now. And it really showed me, okay, well, when you're working on such a long-term project that, you know, each step and every bit of it is very crucial to communicate on, this helped me learn, okay, how do you work with others on such like a sensitive project over such a long period of time. So that that's something else. Um, and then also just for my time being in there, about a year and a half in, I got two publications. So that is, I mean, another thing that looks great on resumes. Um, publications are amazing for uh, graduate school and medical school. And of course, industry likes seeing it too. So really, no matter which path you want to go in, if you could get either um, the general lab experiences or uh, skills, as well as maybe a publication out of it, it will carry you a very, very far away. Last thing I want to end with, though, um, is that there were, I've had plenty of nights where it's 
staying late, you know, repeating the same thing over and over, getting frustrated, asking, well, why isn't this working? You know, it's supposed to be this simple. And you really want to just say, you know what, forget it. I, I don't forget it. But that's, that's not the mentality you should have. You should, whenever you get to those points where it's like, oh man, I want to give up. No, 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 no. You have to turn that around and say, you know what, let me take a step back. Let me think a little bit differently about this and I'll come back to it with a fresh mind. So just no matter how rough or stressful it might be at times, just do not give up. I mean, ask your PIs for help. Ask the graduate students for help. Everybody there is on the same team. And so, of course, team members are going to help each other. So if you get frustrated or stuck on something, you know, you have your colleagues to reach out to. But that was pretty much uh, my experience. So uh, I'll go ahead and hand it off real quick. Uh, for SURF, you have a research poster. This is just a quick example of what mine looked like at the end of it. This took me about a month and a, a little bit over a month to put together. Um, and this is also available on the uh, SURF website, which uh, was shown earlier. I can link that if anybody's interested in going through other uh, SURF posters for examples. But that sums up uh, my experience. I'll go ahead and hand it off to uh, Omar. All right, thank you, Devin. That was a that was so helpful and, and informative. Thanks. So for myself, I joined Dr. Mohan's lab in January of 2019, and that was my second year as a junior during during my undergraduate years. So the Christmas before January, I was actually in the process of looking. Uh, of looking for research uh, faculty and I was sending out emails and uh, I sent I actually sent two e emails one for Dr. Kara Laren and one for Dr. Chanda Mohan. Dr. Laren said no but Dr. Mohan thankfully said yes. I mean he didn't say yes he just uh, he approved me for an interview. I got interviewed and later he I got accepted to the lab. So once I joined the lab I assisted a staff member in the lab with a project that involves um, the inflammatory bowel disease or IBD. And we were just examining the drug delivery via nanoparticles. And if you are wondering drug delivery via nanoparticles, Devin is super expert in that. <laughs> I mean, well, yeah, he knows a lot about it, but yeah, that's like the very first project I was into. And that's so fascinating and I'm, really happy that I had the chance to be a part of that. So following that, I was just under under brief training uh, with one under one of his graduate students. And I learned basic la laboratory practices such as pipetting, as Devin mentioned. I did it the right way when I was there. I did mess, mess it up a few times. <laughs> That's something like it happens. And uh, Following that, I, uh, Dr. Mohan signed me for, uh, for, uh, for uh, to a project with a collaborator in the electrical engineering department. And as you can see here in my video, I'm actually in the lab uh, at the collaborators and I'm still here like almost two years in. Anyways, so I learned how to perform immunostaining or IHC immune histochemistry because that was like important to learn for the project that I was about to get uh, get into for biomedical imaging, and uh, so I graduated last August and I'm a master student right now. So that research uh, research experience that I have attained over my undergraduate years have landed me that uh, position. Uh, for in masters, and uh, so what? What are the gains for that? What did I gain uh, during my undergraduate research experience? I got so in depth in the into the field of biomedical engineering, not in general, but specifically, especially into the the bio nanoscience uh, field and the biomedical imaging field. And um, I did had a decent research experience. I should change tremendous to decent, not like tremendous, but I do have uh, did gain uh, that research experience. And also, networking connection is super important. 
And uh, you're going to meet a lot of people in the lab, uh, whether it's in the lab of the faculty or outside the lab. And these people are going to be so helpful. And maybe in the future, if you need their advice or you want to, you want them, uh, want them to be your recommenders for something, or, and so on and so forth, they can help you easily. Like I was able to. Because when I was applying for my master's degree, I had to get recommendation letters. So these people that I had connections with did agree right away to recommend me for master's. And mm -hmm. also, it's more competitive opportunities uh, after you graduate. So just like what Devin mentioned previously, uh, people love to see that you have that research, uh, research experience and those skills associated with research. And also, um, and it also helps with the graduate school application and uh, with uh, and with industry to some uh, to some extent. So now, just for the just for the sake of time, I have to hand it over to Amanda. I mean, I could speak about it for like forever, but I have to hand it over to Amanda. Is it Lally? Is it Amanda or is it Lally next? Whoever. It's so it is. Yeah, <laughs> go ahead. Okay, um, so I joined the National Youth Body Lab back in January. Um, I did also spend like Thanksgiving and my Christmas break looking at all the labs and emailed all of them. I got interviewed by Dr. Laren and Dr. Nash, no, Dr. Lee Body. Um, so I started there in January and then through that whole spring semester, I was kind of just being trained by a grad student um, much like Omar said, you know, learning how to pipette. I also learned like how to wash dishes like, and also where the gloves are, you know. Um, after a while, I guess after they trusted me, I don't know, I had to do um, training for like basic lab safety, but also started to do my animal training, so like animal welfare. That was really important to learn because I remember like when you first start at the lab, it's like they do so much stuff and you don't know what any of it is but then you slowly get you know, used to the environment. And um, I got used to work with, working with the mice. I only really got to work with them twice because of um, COVID closing everything. Um, but even though um, I COVID closed everything, I still applied for the surf for the summer. Um, I had this whole beautiful project planned out, um, but I didn't get to do any of it. I did do the... Um, literature review. I'm going to present that um, coming up in April. So I also attended the weekly lecture SERS has. Devin didn't mention it, but they're, they teach you things like how to, you know, get your resume ready, how to apply to grad school, um, how to present presentation etiquette, and um, just all kinds of cool stuff that I think is beneficial. Also, no one has mentioned yet, um, that whenever you go to interview, be sure like to bring um, your schedule, your class schedule. I remember when I first met with Dr. Everybody, he was like, I wasn't sure if he liked me or not, so I didn't bring mine, but then he like, automatically asked me for it after a conversation. So maybe you, you'll have that kind of luck too, and you should have that with you. That's it. Okay, so I am the last one. Don't worry, we'll get to questions after this. Um, this summer, I actually participated in the SMART program at the Baylor College of Medicine. Um, so I'm going to speak more to experiences outside of the university. Um, REUs, generally, like Jacob was saying before, these are the things that you can apply um, to almost every university. We'll, we'll have something like this. Um, so what I did uh, due to COVID, I did not actually I have never been on the Baylor College of Medicine campus, um, but through Zoom, I was able to work with a postdoc in that lab. And um, she kind of taught me like sort of the basic process of like what her project was doing and like where I fit in. Um, on There's actually kind of a lot of things you can do remotely, even if like our, our lab is a wet lab, it's a biochemistry lab. Um, but I learned how to design primers. There's plenty of, like my computer, I think is running out of storage. There's, 
applications called Snapgene that I learned. Um, I primarily what I did was like quantify images. So she would take images and send them to me to get data on. Um, I also did a lot of reading. That's kind of like the only thing you can do, I guess. Um, so I'm. they actually liked me. So I'm continuing to work with this lab remotely until spring. Um, and now I'm on a new project. Uh, that project is like, we also work with mice and we have to wait for the mice to be three months old. <laughs> so we're like putting a pause on that project. Uh, so now I'm working with a new project on glioblastoma and I'm doing bioinformatics. So I'm working on like coding. So again, there's, there's like things you can do despite uh, the circumstances. Are you in bioinformatics this semester? Or... No. Okay. I am, um, don't think I'm going to take that class. But, <laughs> so like some things I learned were just general research skills. I know that that's something that um, is technically taught to you, especially in tech com. Uh, at this point, I hadn't taken tech com. I'm taking it this semester. So really learning how to use a database, like narrow down your search using Google Scholar, um, as well as presentation skills. Um, at the end of this 10 week program, we all had to give a 10 minute talk. Uh, Devin actually went to mine. Uh, we had to go to a 10 minute talk uh, and just explain like what we did. Uh, additionally, we did have weekly lab meetings, kind of like what Silali was saying, where a member of the lab would present like what they've been doing for the past three months or however long it's been since they last presented. That's a little more informal, um, but you still kind of like learn, you get to learn about the entire lab in that part too. Um, the last part, applied knowledge in biochem and biology. Uh, I put this because I think a lot of things that I learned in class really didn't stick until I had to do them and apply them. I think I'm definitely somebody that like has to do it. Um, for me, I took biochemistry last spring and it got really weird and we got sent home. I took the AP credit for biology. So I really had like limited knowledge. Um, but again, they know that they know that you're an undergrad uh, and that's expected. Like they're never going to judge you for not knowing something, which is kind of like the good thing about being an undergrad. I think it gets worse when you become a grad student. But as an undergrad, you're kind of like really not expected to know much. So if you know a little bit, it kind of goes a long way. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so um, just kind of a couple last things uh, before we go ahead and go to the questions. Like I was saying earlier, I mean, don't don't see these scholarships, REUs, or fellowships or anything and think, okay, well, there's no way I'd get it, you know, apply to it. I mean, you do not know if you'll get it or not unless you apply to it. So just as it says, as the first bullet point says, just do it, just go for it. I mean, you have nothing to lose at all. Um, Great thing about this university also is we are a fairly big and respected research university um, in all types of fields, especially our department. We have our hands in so many different types of fields that it's ridiculous. Um, so really, since we're the jack of all trades of engineering, um, we have a lot of options which we can turn to in our department alone let alone the rest of the university. We don't know nearly half of what the rest of the university is doing. So there's plenty of options out there. Um, and last thing, I don't know if y'all have met him or not. He's, his voice is probably one of the most soothing things imaginable. He's the nicest guy ever. Um, our department I'll head easily fall asleep in class. Oh man, but you gotta admit, he's got a beautiful voice and it's just so soothing. I, I don't know what I, it is, but Dr. Akai, um, Metna Akai is our department head. And he, any bit of undergraduate involvement, he loves to see. Um, for example, last, this past Monday, we were passing in the hall of the department and he had said oh hey i saw the picture from project cure 
you know, I'm glad that y'all are getting out there and, you know, being proactive. That's a big thing. That's a pretty big thing. Um, so that goes to show that he loves seeing undergraduate involvement and, in, you know, activity engagement. Um, so really, I'm point being is just go for it. Just try. You have nothing to lose from it. You only stand to gain, really. The worst thing that could happen is you're told no. But as I've told you all previously before, it's not the end of the world if you're told no for something. You, you know, say, okay, well, it wasn't meant to be, and you keep going and you try to find another one. Um, so that that's pretty much it uh, as far as the ending remarks. So we'll go through um, the chat. There's only, I believe, two uh, questions. Let's uh, go ahead and uh, take a picture, please. If everyone oh, yeah, can yeah, turn yeah. on the cameras, um, please. Yeah, sit Lolly so she can get a picture of us. And um, uh, Maren, would you please end the sharing? Yeah, please. We're so cute. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Hold so on. if everybody Ryan could go has ahead it up there in space. And turn their camera on, give Got little go cooks, you know, it'd be okay. great. Okay, I think we're good. So ready? Uh, three, two, one, smile. Okay. And one without the coup, just, just regular smile. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Mommy, no. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Um, if you could go ahead and pull that um, slide back up. Mark, All right. That um, last one. I'll go ahead and address the two questions in chat. And then if anybody else has any. Um, the last slide just said any questions. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's just. To show that we it's an arbitrary questions. placeholder. It's really an arbitrary placeholder. Um, so first question we got, is there a GPA requirement for these REUs? Yes, there is, but it is not a limiting factor. So whenever I applied for CERF, I believe it was a 3.0 GPA requirement. It was three or 3.2, um, it just varied by program. Yeah, somebody, it's surf, around that. Uh, CERF in person general required a minimum of 3.0 according to the website for undergraduate research. Yeah, and so. I had a 2.8 GPA whenever I applied. I still got it. I mean- Well, yeah, you shot your shot and you got it. That's which... what I'm saying. Like, mm -hmm. Same for me, back... I was at 2.9. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That goes back to two points. One, that nobody really applies for these things. So, Chances I are, if you just apply, <laughs> I mean, chances are you'll, if you apply, you'll get it. Um, so then also my second point, um, or what second point it goes back to is um, just go for it. Just do it. I mean, don't let, you know, any hesitation in your mind stop you or think, you know, I'm not good enough, or I can't do this. There's no, there's, there's nobody stopping you. Go for it. Um, so essentially, yes, there. Are, in essence, there are GPA requirements, but it is not a limiting factor. Me and Sit Lolly are both examples of that. Um, the second question uh, is: Should you worry about, or should, excuse me, uh, should you attach your resume? to the email or wait until the professor asks. So what I would suggest on that is whenever you're first reaching out to them, it's, you kind of want to get a feel for their personality and, you know, kind of general sense of the vibe that they got going on. Because you don't want to send your resume with it and then it's just like, okay, well, what, what are they, the professor, the professor might look at it and be like, what do they want from this? So what I would suggest is talk to them first, mention, hey, I'm interested um, in research and, or I'm interested in your research. Can we talk about it? After you kind of like get that initial email out there of like the just touching base, then start mentioning, you know, hey, I'm interested in volunteering. Uh, is there an open position? Here's my resume. 
So in essence, it's touch base with them first, let them know that you're interested, see kind of what they reply and say, and then go kind of go from there and maybe then say, well, you know, I'm interested in doing or participating in your lab. Here's my resume, you know, would you be happen, would you happen to have a spot open, which I can take? So don't initially send it, but wait and see what they kind of get the vibe first. Um, so, yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. What's up? Yeah, so Jeremy has previously asked what classes should we take before we apply for RUs under the professors. So well, it doesn't really matter. Well, they do ask for your they do ask for your transcript, just like to check your GPA. But I don't think, uh, like uh, speaking of experience, I was never asked have Have you finished uh, those class those specific classes? So no, I do not think so. But and you did ask later on if we have to take biomedical engineering, uh, enter by enter BME or biochemistry before applying. Also, that is not a that is not a requirement because I got into the lab before taking those two classes, uh, intro to BME and uh, and uh, bi biochemistry. So it's not a limiting factor at all. Yeah, um, what I, I sometimes I, I, definitely help. Yeah, uh, it's not. It does help. I, from, go this ahead. is what I was gonna uh, suggest for that. So it really depends. What I would say on that is it kind of depends on what you're doing in the lab or what the lab is involved in and um, the level of comprehension, what you want to be at. So no professor is going to say, well, you haven't taken, you know, intro to BME. I don't want you. That That's not the case. But if you're joining a lab that does primarily coding in MATLAB, for example, and you've already taken the 1331, there, what, what's kind of the point of waiting until you take biochem or intro to BME um, if it's like you know, if you have knowledge already on what you're doing? Um, I would suggest though, in my, this is just my personal opinion, of course, take it with a grain of salt and modify it to your own. But what I would suggest is if you want to go into a lab knowing kind of, okay, the basics or principal foundations of what's going on, I would suggest then to wait until um, after organic chemistry and after biochemistry because that will give you a really good solid uh, foundation for you to understand, you know, okay, well, this is, I have an idea of what's going on. Although it might not be in depth, um, you'll still be able to follow along for the most part. Um, but point being, there is no classes that it's like you have to take this before you apply. It, it's more so just what is the lab involved in and what level of comprehension do you want to be at? Um, so that that's kind of that. Uh, let's see. So oh. Sean is asking, does the interim grading policy affect this? I got some Bs and then changed them to S, Ss to keep my GPA high. It shouldn't. Uh, I mean, I don't, as long as it doesn't affect your GPA, it shouldn't be, you know, a concern. I, I don't think so. Um, because they're not necessarily going through and looking at each individual course you've taken and saying, okay, well, in this one, they got an A, in this one, they got a B. Better. No, no, no. They're just looking at the overall GPA. Um, or even more so, they're looking at your major GPA. So I don't think that they're going to go through and just or maybe this. they want to have a perspective of what classes you already completed. If I anything, that's it. They really want to. Yeah, they really just want to see what does this, what, what do they know? What have they been exposed to? You know, kind of, kind of stuff like that. But as far as an, just taking the satisfactory grade, I haven't done that. Um, I don't, 
off the top of my head know anybody who has, but I don't see that being a problem or anything. As long as your GPA is good, I mean, I don't see it being a problem. Um, let's see. What's the website website that I should go to for research opportunities? Okay, wow. Well, so, uh, yeah, there you so go. So Amanda just really uh, gave an expansive no, answer on that one. So the link oh, that I sent from the NSF, that one will lead you to like this site that has all of the topics. The ones you're probably gonna wanna look at are biological sciences and engineering. Um, and then from there, you can like narrow down your search to Texas or whatever. Amanda, you previously asked, uh, uh, asked us to navigate us through something. You still wanna do that? Sorry, thank yeah, you so I was, much. I joined in late. That's why I asked. Thank you. Oh, yeah. No, no problem. problem. I was just going to kind of outline the REU process, like application process for um, REUs outside of U of H, just because it is different. I, yeah. But okay, so um, before doing that, uh, let's address Anne, uh, Anne's uh, Anne Tran question. Yeah, so, so. concerning that, um, Really, uh, I mean, I'm going to take the, I'm going to make the assumption that you're about sophomore, junior level, maybe give or take, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but a professor is not going to say, okay, if you want to be in my lab, I need a letter of recommendation. No, that's, I've never heard of that happening. It's not before. customary within uh, research professors. So. It's not. It, a professor to ask that of an undergrad, it's kind of like, it doesn't make too much sense, you know? Well, I think she's also uh, money from surf and purse where you do need it. Oh, um, yeah. That's so something for different, that, yeah. Yeah, no. Okay, so I was going to address just kind of how to go about getting recommendation letters real quick in general. Um, so what I would suggest is in your classes, uh, be very active and engage with your professors and stick around afterward to this is all to get a recommendation letter. Um, what I would suggest is in their class, ask questions, be engaged, answer things, stick around after, ask them more questions, email them and say like, hey, you know, I found this or what about this, da da da. And just be overall very engaged in the course show it like you have initiative and you're enthusiastic about it um once you start to get talking a lot with the professor um even if it is just about the course uh they they start to you form a relationship with them and then they get to more they get more comfortable with writing you a recommendation letter um so what I'm saying is, as you're going through, find a professor that you like or think is cool, get cool with them, ask them questions, talk to them a lot. And then after the semester, say, hey, you know, would you mind writing me a le recommendation letter, da, da, da. More than likely, 99.9% .9 of the time, they will say yes. About 80% of the time, this is where it gets good, they'll say, why don't you write the recommendation letter, send it to me and I'll sign off on it. So that's-, that's was to me, I was kind of audited out by that. That's what happened yeah. to me too, but yeah. it's fine. So, so audited out. <laughs> yeah, so as far as obtaining a recommendation letter, if you just get cool with the professor to the point where they're comfortable enough to write you one, um, regardless if you think like oh well you know i'm in that good of standing with them at the end of the semester still just ask them and say like hey you know would you mind writing me uh, one and like i said majority of the time they'll say yes and write your own rec letter send it to me i'll sign off on it and send it so that's usually how the uh, letter of recommendation process goes along does okay. that kind of answer your question? Uh, Anne? I'll go ahead and take the silence as a, oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> I was about to say. 
Okay, so um, now that the questions are kind of out of the way, I did totally forget to even mention this, like in my, um, like when I was talking about my REU experience. So um, first of all, I don't know if you guys know this, but the surf actually surprised me uh, at U of H being open in January and closing in March um, because last year I started applying right now. Like I started applying at the end of October because most of my applications closed at the beginning of January or the beginning of February. So just keep that in mind. If you wanna do something this summer, I know that um, you know we really have no idea what's gonna happen with the virus, especially because you know the current state of the union is unknown, unclear, like what's gonna happen in the next like week or two. Currently, so, tentatively, um, a provost, the provost sent out an announcement about that. There are well, I mean, um, in terms of REU. So what happened to me oh. was basically I, I applied to five because I knew that I knew that I was gonna like 360 no scope this like admins <laughs> email with no experience. I just came in with no experience, a like medium GPA. Um, so. I applied to five because I was like, I know that my chances might not be super great because I have no experience um, when I was applying. Uh, so yeah, I applied to five. I made one of them uh, sort of like a reach, like it was a fancy one. Um, so on top of that, uh, what else I was gonna say to you, typically all of mine included at least two sort of essays. One of them is gonna be similar to, I don't know if you guys have heard this for grad school, you usually have to write like a letter of intent or like a, um, what are those called? A sta personal, personal statement. statement. Personal yeah. statement, yeah. So you basically just have to explain like, you know, where you are in your academic career, what you wanna do. My only advice for essays is one, like the word count can be so different. So for one of them, I my, max was 100 words and for another one my max was a thousand words um, but some advice I got from Dr. Spillers that I think really helped was be as specific as possible because if you come in there like very vague like yeah you know I'm like re interested in research and I might get my PhD and that's what I want to do um, you know they might not take you as seriously as somebody so for me at the time uh, I was really interested in like uh, neurodegenerative diseases uh, specifically Alzheimer's disease. So I talked about that. I talked about how that would be like a huge dream of mine to become a professor and have a lab and study that. Um, that's not, I wasn't like super true or, or that wasn't, I was only 19 when I wrote that. So I think they know that like, I, I'm gonna stop rambling. Long story short, be specific because they, that shows that you put a lot of time into it. Um, Next, you'll have a rec letter. There's usually two. One of them, Dr. Waits can write. So um, get her to write it. And then what Devin said about the rec letters, get like a professor that you're cool with. Uh, it doesn't even have to be like a recent professor. I got Dr. Coda, who was my intro to engineering professor and my computing professor to write it. Um, one thing I will also say though, is they will forget. And so you have to get comfortable with like gently reminding them like, hey, you know, my application's due in two weeks and I saw that you still haven't submitted your letter, uh, but they like, they're not gonna take offense to that. Um, yeah, and another thing that, um, I know that the surf at U of H gives you a scholarship. Most REUs that are taking, so the surf at U of H is only for U of H students. But no, most- No, that is not true. Never mind. No. Does it provide housing, do you know? Mm, I don't know as far as the compensation, but I know that we had people from Rice um, okay. participating in it as well. So never mind. But so for all of the ones that I applied for, on top of the stipend, you did get housing and food. So whether that be like in the like dorms on campus, or I think um, I was going to do the one at UT Southwestern, <laughs> but they completely canceled. Uh, so I did the one at Baylor. At Baylor, I think they were going to put us in a hotel and then shuttle us like back and forth from the campus. Um, so um, if any of y'all were here last year, I hate to cut you off, Amanda, but uh, for time's sake. 
So if any, for those of y'all who were here last year, um, our previous president, Brittany, she actually had an REU with uh, University of Chicago. Ohio. Or Ohio, yeah, there it goes. And they flew her out there. They gave her a place to stay. They gave her, you know, uh, money for food and they kind of gave her a stipend for all of that stuff. So that is another great way to get out of Houston or get, you know, explore. We have a huge country and with opportunities like this available that are saying, hey, you can come and learn and participate in something that's interesting on top of we'll pay you to live here. That is a just great opportunity that everybody should take advantage of. I mean, you want to find it somewhere else. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. It's a real, I mean, just the research alone is a great experience, much less being able to explore another state or city like that. That's something that you usually wouldn't get. So, yeah. So the, sorry. No, go on. Go ahead. Okay. So the last thing I was going to say is, was that like, the, while there's a lot of opportunities in Houston, like I, there's probably, because we have the medical center, we have Rice, we have U of H. Um, I would suggest, again, because of the situation and we don't know really how the next administration is going to handle it we could definitely be dealing with this well into the summer so um you know so out of the five i got accepted to two of them and i planned on going to the one in dallas because i live in dallas but that one completely canceled like at the end of march they were like sorry we can't do it um so i went to the one at baylor because they at least attempted to go online i do think a lot of REUs are going to have like an online backup plan. Um, But just a warning, like, because it was, it went online and we weren't actually like physically contributing. I don't want to say labor, but like we weren't literally doing anything. We weren't living there and we weren't expected to work 40 hours a week Um, because it was online. It was not compensated. So just keep that in mind. They know that um, it's more flexible that way because they knew that you know, if, if it's not compensated, people probably had to get summer jobs. Um, but just saying, maybe be prepared for that. You will still get a really good experience, I think. Um, but yeah, that was all yeah. I had So um, it's a little bit past eight o'clock right now, pretty late. Um, where exactly was the Dallas Yeah, RU? where exactly was the Dallas RU? In Mount Dallas, where you? It was at UT Southwestern. So it was right it's in a medical middle. center in uh, Dallas, I guess, right? It's like the biggest, I think we have like a Texas Children's, but that one doesn't have an REU. So it, it like, hmm. that's like the only opportunity in Dallas. So that's why I applied because I was like, I want to stay home. But One thing that I wanted to add on top of Devin and Amanda's input is after you finish finish up sketching your, drafting your uh your uh, personal statement and the essays they ask you for, I would ha- highly recommend you get back to like your faculty advisor. When I was applying for Paris, I asked Dr. Spiller uh, if he would be willing to edit my uh, proposal and he did it for me and I was so grateful for that. And that eventually got me the, got me the Paris or the opp- opportunity to pr- participate in the program. So the writing and the and the drafting process is so important and make sure you have someone with experience to, to help you with that. Um, yeah, so Amanda just put a link real quick before we wrap this up. Um, Amanda put a link to all the a description of all the labs research in our department. So if you go through there, <clears throat> I mean, even as you know, high level as me and Omar are, I'm sure if we were to go through some of these descriptions, we would be confused about what they're saying. So don't think, okay, well, this is a bunch of jargon mumbo jumbo and get drowned by it. Just kind of go through it, see what you think is interesting and then reach out to them maybe. Um, yeah, also their research statements on the website, some of them are a few years old. And they may have started new projects or some of those products that they stated there, they probably have completed. To yeah. Worth yeah. Good well. point. That's a very good yeah. point. Thank you. Um, so but they, what I'm going to. Yeah. A lot of them have their own websites. 
Yeah. So yeah. we're going to make sure to send you all all of these links uh, in the group me and in the next newsletter so everyone can stay like on the same page. Th that was a lot of information. And yeah. is there anything you want to say, Devin? Um, no, last thing I'm going to end it out with is uh, one, if you all have any questions or anything, or if there's anything else that you all want to kind of further talk about, please reach out to any one of us. We're seriously more than happy you know, to assist y'all or just chat with y'all if y'all like. Um, and two, thank you all for coming out. We really appreciate your interest, not only um, in joining tonight, but just general interest in research. Um, I mean, I mean, it, it looks really good that y'all are showing the initiative. Okay, I wanna get out there. It, it's a great thing. And I would say, keep that attitude um, and energy up. Um, but last thing, again, if y'all have any questions, please reach out to us. And thank you all for coming out. Thank uh, you so we'll much, send, everyone. Yeah, we'll send the recording out to y'all um, so y'all could go through it and check anything you want. But other than that, just message us.